Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome into what's going to be a very special little episode here. We're going to be talking today about the brand new Marfion Custom Combat Interceptor. And this was a uh, Blade Show score of mine, even though I was not able to go to Blade. Uh, Tony and Hank were kind enough to make sure that, uh, because they were releasing them that weekend, that they had one there for me, knowing that I had some friends there. A buddy of mine picked it up. Uh, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. And when he came back home to Texas, he was able to hand deliver it to me. Uh, from the time I saw the sneak peek of this on Tony's Instagram account, I went ape shit because when I saw the blade and saw the fact that it was going to be mirrored, I lost it. Had to have it. The first versions they came out, I believe, were Damascus, and a few people had already had those. And as much as I love Damascus, it didn't sing to me quite the same way that this blade does. There was something about having this sawback buoy in a full mirror polished blade. I had to have it. Now you guys saw the last combat troodon that I uh, had under my lens, and that was the uh, the recurve blade and the mirror black DLC. Love it. That was number zero zero one, and I lucked out again here and got serial number zero zero one on this one. So again, thank you, Tony. Thank you, Hank. You guys rock. Totally amazing. This thing is just magnificent. I really love the size of the combat troodons. Uh, up until I got into these, the Ultratech was always my favorite size. Uh, I had a Scarab and I felt the Scarab was a little too big, at least at that time years ago. And I really liked the Ultratech for its uh, very compact feel, ease of carry, but it still felt like a full size enough knife. The combat troodon being a little bit bigger, a little bit taller, there's something about it that just fits me very, very well. Love the feel of it. There's, there's only one thing, and I'll, I'll start with the cons. There's only one thing about this knife that I wish were different. This looks like the standard body on a production Microtech Combat Troodon. If you remember, on my recurve, it was all a beautiful black, smooth satin finish on the frame. I really wish that the custom touches would have gone into the, to the uh, as they call it, the chassis, uh, as much as it has the blade. But it doesn't matter. I wanted this knife for the blade, and I got one hell of an amazing blade. Let's talk about the specifications of this knife, then we'll get into a little bit of the history of it. Um, what you've got here in the chassis is a black hard coat anodized 6061 T6 aluminum. So yeah, it's going to be nice and lightweight. Uh, nice tough finish. I've never really had an issue with any of Microtech or Tony Marfion's finishes. Uh, they seem to hold up very well for what they are. Never had any complaints. Uh, the blade length when you're getting into a combat troodon is three and three quarter inches, so 3.75 inches. Uh, the cutting edge on this, let me bring this light over a little bit closer. So I think it's going to give me better coverage so you can see the blade a little better. Yeah, that helps a little bit, doesn't it? Uh, you're looking at about 3.625 inches for the cutting length on the main edge. Now here's the thing, up here, this is also sharpened and I was not expecting that. So you've got an inch and a half of sharpened blade up here. Now when we talk about the sawback option, it's not sharp as far as having an edge. It does come down to a very narrow false edge, but each of the individual teeth, the corners, are extremely sharp. So if I were to do this, I would slice myself open. So it is absolutely effective for what it looks like, which is uh, uh, tearing guts. That's really what it's going to be. You get it in, in there, give it a little twist and pull it out, and you're just, you're just tearing shit up on the way out. Not that that's why you're buying this knife, but if you are, hey, there you go, bonus. Uh, closed length, 5.7 inches. So it's <clears throat> it's not a tiny knife, but it's still very easy to carry, uh, even if you're wearing jeans. So don't worry about the overall size of this knife. Uh, you've got the, uh, the glass breaker back here. 
with the carbide tip. Um, if you got a little bit of weight on you, got a little spare tire action going on there, hanging out over your waistband, uh, that might dig into you a little bit, but uh, I've had no issues carrying these whatsoever. Uh, I actually really, really do like this size. I love how they fire. Ultratechs are great, but it's a, a slightly weaker spring. This fires and retracts so hard, it's nearly coming out as fast as a Halo 5. So you've got a just fantastic action on this, as you would expect from all of them, really. Whether it's a custom uh, or a production, you're going to get the, uh, the same degree of performance. Look at that. Holy shit. This is absolutely the meanest looking profile of any out the front that Tony's making. The next closest uh, is going to be the Hellhound. The Hellhound also looks really, really mean. Uh, it's not too dissimilar from this uh, style, but uh, it is going to be quite a bit different uh, in terms of the, the way that the overall knife ends up looking. Now, the inspiration for this knife... For those that don't know, Tony makes a knife called the Interceptor, which is a big, massive, nearly 8-inch blade, fixed blade, survival knife. As a matter of fact, Tony was kind enough and generous enough to send out two of his knives from his personal collection. Because I wanted to be able to show you, side by side, just how close that blade is to the original and I felt it was only right uh, so I reached out to Tony I said hey Tony I'm gonna probably make a video on this uh, this amazing knife uh, you wouldn't happen to have an interceptor laying around somewhere in the office as I could borrow could you he's like oh oh yeah no problem and then I get this ginormous box on my front doorstep and uh, open it up and, and there's two and, and he says these are from my personal collection uh, so obviously I'm gonna be very 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 careful with these when you get into the black here, let's start with that one. The black is a black DLC apocalyptic finish. So it's not a satin, it's not a mirror, it's his apocalyptic, a type of uh, kind of random stone wash that's being done there. It gives it a worn, battle-worn effect. Um, this particular version comes in a uh, carbon fiber looking Kydex sheath. And then for the hand rub satin version, which is amazing by the way uh, one thing I will never ever ever do again is try to photograph a black knife a satin and a mirror polished knife all in the same photograph ever again uh, it was a lighting nightmare won't ever do it again so the pictures you saw in the beginning of the video uh, enjoy them because that's all I'm ever gonna do so that is the satin version with the OD green wrap around the handle now let's talk about where the interceptor concept actually comes from. And this is something I wanted to, to, to talk with Tony about because I had my own theories on it uh, and so do other people. When you look at the interceptor, it reminds you of the 1980s, that excess that we had thanks to the Rambo movies. And a lot of people are going to look at this and see it and go, Jimmy Lyle. And, and yeah, there is definitely some influence. Um, it's Jimmy Lyle and Jack Crane, basically, because if you look at the handles, uh, both Jimmy Lyle and Jack Crane used very, 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 very similar handles uh, on their survival knives, which, as you know, were, were huge hits in the 1980s. And they were big, monstrous, oversized, 13-plus inch blades. And they were definitely popularized by Stallone and Rambo. That was the Jimmy Lyle knives when you go back to First Blood and Rambo. Um, then Rambo 3, obviously, was the Gil Hibben knife. Then you get to... Many of you guys might remember Commando, the Schwarzenegger movie. Jack Crane designed that knife. Uh, I think he also, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be wrong here, but I think he also did Billy's Machete also in, uh, in Predator. Uh, regardless, it was all about excess. It was about big, giant, oversized. Nobody would ever need anything that big, but holy shit, when you pull something like that out, you can't help but to be impressed. So I asked Tony, I said, listen, I said, you know, so what's the, uh, what's the, I have to be very careful, by the way, these are stupid sharp. Uh, I said, you know, is this, you know, more or less an homage to those makers and those knives? And he says, absolutely. He goes, I, when I was a kid, I was enamored with the Jimmy Lyle Rambo knives and the Jack Crane 
uh, commando knife. And he says, I really wanted to make something myself that reminded me of that. Had obviously some differences, but I definitely wanted to pay homage to that and make a more modern variation of it. And I think he certainly has done it. You can certainly look at this. And the reason why I'm making the delineation between Crane and Lyle is if you looked at a Lyle knife, the uh, it's not a, a sawback like this. It's a little bit different. And it runs most of the way down. Ah, shit. Yep, see, I forgot that was sharpened there, too. So I took a nice little piece of skin out. Uh, these serrations went very, very far down toward the tip, whereas Jack Cranes didn't. They stopped right here, and then you had that, I wanted to say false edge, but uh, I think it might have been a full edge as well. And one of the things that, uh, that Tony decided to do was he milled out these pockets here on both sides of the blade, and that helps to lighten this knife up a lot. And it still doesn't lose any of its uh, you know, structural strength, structural rigidity at all. It's still going to be a very, very strong blade. Speaking of blades, uh, so again, it's a, a 7 and 7.8 inch blade just about. Overall is uh, 13 and a quarter inches. Cutting edge is 6 inches. It is a quarter inch thick blade stock. All S35VN for whichever variation you go with. Um, and for those that don't know about old, these old style survival knives, I will show you very quickly. Uh, they are hollow handled. So here we have the uh, tri wing look. And there is your compass. And that's not a cheap old compass, uh, that is a genuine Francis Barker NATO survival compass. This is a uh, this is not inexpensive shit here. Uh, there's nothing inside of this handle because everything is still packaged as if it were factory new. So I will just show you that. I'm not opening it because this is, you know, Tony's personal knife. I don't have permission to do that. Uh, but inside here you've got a saw, you've got a fire starter, and a fishing kit that uh, pretty much everything, not, not this section here, but all the other stuff will fit right inside of that hollow handle. So that's where the interceptor came from. And you know what? That's pretty damn cool. When you have, and we all did, I think, as guys, had that love for these big crazy knives that we saw in the movies. But how many of us grew up to be a knife maker that could make their own version of that knife? How cool is that? I think that's pretty damn awesome. And you know what? If I were a knife maker, I'd be doing the same damn thing. So there you go. So that is the influence. Let's see if I can put these side by side and show you as best I can. It's really hard to get the light just right. I'd have to have much larger studio lights to do this. Uh, but as you can see, they are identical. Only difference is the size and the material. I think he's using, still using LMAX on the, uh, on the out the fronts. So that is it right there, guys, and that's why I thought this was such a wonderful opportunity uh, to bring these knives out. And again, thank you, Tony, for letting me borrow these, because I don't really ever bring fixed blades out on my channel. I've only really done videos on, I think, two fixed blades ever. I do own several, and one of these days I am going to get around to uh, putting them under the lens, but to see the influence from one to the other and see how you can translate this uh, almost cartoonish, ridiculous, oversized, crazy symbol of the 80s and put it into a pocketable out the front knife with a little bit of extra flash. It's pretty damn cool. Now he does also, by the way, offer the full-size interceptor in a full mirror blade as well. As a matter of fact, I just saw one recently over at pvk.vegas. I know they've got one in stock. And listen, they're not cheap. I think the least expensive is like, I don't know, like $1,400, $1,500, bucks, and they go up to like $2,000 for the mirror polish. Again, that's the prices I see at dealers. I don't know if that's the direct price, uh, so I'm literally just guessing on that there. And these come in beautiful packaging. The satin blade here came in a really, really expensive, really nice uh, leather sheath gorgeous and like I mentioned the uh, the black one with the apocalyptic finish came in the kydex very slick little system here man there's uh, there's a lot to love and I think if you're fortunate enough to own both to have a fixed blade and, and also the out the front version I mean how freaking cool is that man 
that's a great pairing. But for most of us, that's going to be impractical. We're going to stick to just having the one that we can carry around in our pockets and use. And I think it's just terrible that there are so many states that disallow people from owning or carrying or both of automatic knives because you guys are missing out on some really, really, really cool shit. It's nice to be able to carry something like this around. It's compact, it's lightweight, and you've got something that, you know, for even if somebody's not a knife guy, they're just kind of like a guy's guy, a gadget guy. Who doesn't think it's cool to have that automatic blade firing in and out with all that power? And to know that it is insanely razor sharp and actually a useful tool. Now for me, it's not really going to be much of a tool. It's, it's a number one, so at some point somebody might put value on it. Um, it's a fully mirror polished blade. I don't want to go out hacking up shit and ruin that finish. So the knives that I have in mirror finish blades, they see less use than my satins and my bead blasted and my stone washed and all the other stuff that I've got. So yeah, this one's going to be more or less baby. It'll get carried all the time. I've already carried it several times since I got it uh, just two weeks ago. And, yeah, it'll cut things here and there. Probably nothing uh, any more abusive than string or opening letters. But, you know, the point is to enjoy it for whatever you enjoy it for. If you decide to, uh, if you find one of these, and you decide to buy it and just put it in a little plexiglass box and put a fucking halogen lamp over it and just stare at it every day, uh, by all means, go for it. You're spending a shitload of money on this. You're allowed to do whatever the hell you want to with it. Now, again, these aren't cheap. It's a Marfion Custom, so yeah, you're going to pay a good chunk of change. Uh, I've seen them at dealers anywhere from $1,300 to about $1,800. So I guess, you know, it's going to depend on the blade finish and everything else. The mirror polish blades and the Damascus blades are always the most expensive. So if you got mirror polish blade, Damascus or a blued Damascus. Those are your top three most expensive blade options uh, from Tony. Actually, there's another. Uh, on certain knives, he'll do inlays of carbon fiber or abalone uh, or, or different mother pearl maybe. So yeah, that's just top four. But if you get into an apocalyptic finish, uh, bead blasted finish, hand rub satin, and hand rub satin isn't cheap, but it is easier to afford than all of the others. Oh, just listen to that bad boy. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of Tony's. I'm not going to deny it. Uh, I have been a little rough on Tony in the past. Many of you remember my very first R-rated review. Um, and Tony was nothing but gracious about that the very first time I ever met him after doing that video. Um, and he's just been nothing but cool. And uh, I, I respect the guy for the achievements that he's made. I mean, he has perfected the world of automatic knives. He really has. He set the bar, did that a long, long time ago. And he's consistently putting out a good product. You don't have to buy a Marfion Custom to get an amazing automatic. You could buy a standard off-the-shelf Microtech and you're buying the cream of the crop. You're buying some of the best that have ever existed. So yeah, if you don't want to spend 14, 15, 1600 bucks on this, you could buy a uh, Combat Troodon in any number of blade styles and blade finishes and spend roughly 400 bucks. Now, I realize that's still a lot of money. I'm not going to lie. But it's, a, it's, you know, a thousand bucks cheaper than this is. And you're still getting a damn good knife. So you've always got lots of options. And that's one of the things that I think is, uh, is pretty damn awesome uh, about these two companies, about, you know, Marfion Custom and Microtech, is there's a world of options out there. If you can't carry or you don't like automatics, they got some damn good folders out there as well. So... Um, you know, obviously they don't need me to advertise for them. They're, they've been around forever and they're one of the you know, household names. But if you've, uh, if you've never really uh, taken a chance on anything Microtech, and maybe you have and you want to take that step into a Marfion Custom, you know, you can look at any number of my videos here on my channel and see that I'm a fan. I've had a lot of really nice knives in and out of my hands over the years. And I can tell you that very few automatics will stack up 
to a standard Microtech, let alone a, a custom. And pretty much anything that uh, Tony designs and manufactures to any degree is going to be fantastic quality. So that's my little spiel on Microtech slash Marfion. So take that for what it's worth. That's just my personal feelings. This particular knife, uh, badass, is probably going to live in my home forever. I don't know. You know, we always say that. Oh, this is a forever keeper. I'm never going to get rid of it. And, you know, one day you just decide, I like that other pretty shiny object more. You never really know. But uh, that's certainly going to be a long-term knife for me. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm going to try and crank out some more videos here for you soon. Don't forget, I'm now doing high-end flashlight reviews, so check out my Into the Light series right here on my channel. Check out the intro video, the introduction to the Into the Light series, and uh, see if that's anything that you're going to be interested in. I'm going to continue to grow my channel and do some different things here and there, so I uh, hope you guys stick around for the ride.